Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Marquetta Breslin with the Marquetta Breslin Show, and I'm here with a super extra special guest. <laughs> uh, some of you may know him as What Lace on Instagram, but others may know him as Jermaine. He is a master wig maker, incredible hairstylist, Aww. and we just so happen to live in the same city. My goodness. So I said... I reached out to you a couple months ago before we changed, you know, the the concept of the podcast and all that. And you said, I'm down. Yes. So this year, the first of the year, you're my first guest. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah. You're my first, first guest. First, I had to get over the initial shock of seeing you in my <laughs> inbox. <laughs> That's the first part. You are just an amazing thank person. Thank you so much. You are an amazing entity in this industry. Mm, thank you and very, just, very much. I'm totally honored. To be in your wow. presence today. Thank you. How did this happen? I don't know. The, I, say, God is I always amazing. say God is amazing. God is amazing, yes. my sister. <laughs> what an honor for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, indeed. So let's talk about how you got started in the beauty industry as a whole. Like where where did you always have a love for, be, for the beauty industry or what prompted uh, you? Hair. It's always. It's so funny. I've like I'm. 43. I'm not ashamed to say it. Mm -hmm. 43 years old. And hair for me goes back as far as I can remember as like about six years old. Wow. I was cutting hair. I was I, I'm not ashamed to say it. I wasn't playing with the dolls. I got you. But the hair. It was the hair that you were doing. It was to. the hair. Yeah. And that goes back like to six. I can remember six. My, I had a cousin that we were very close in age. She was female. I was male. And she had a head full of hair and I was always somewhere braiding her hair up at night, <laughs> like seven years old. You know, my grandma would tell her to come go let Jermaine braid your hair up so y'all can go so you can go to bed or so whatnot. How did you learn to braid? I had cousins around that. Oh, okay, back so in the days. Just... Yeah, I had cousins. We would wear, you know, when the summer yep, came, we yep. wear the cornrows, go mm -hmm. swimming. So I was around braiders and. I mean, I, I couldn't corn roll back then, but I could do a three strand twist, you know, <laughs> a mean yeah, one. I could part that hair in four <laughs> sections and give you three strand, you know, a, yes. a, a plait like that. Uh -huh. So I was pretty good with the plait at, at seven. Wow. And, you know, my grandma was she was one of the ones that first saw that my dad's mom. Wow. Really. And it, it was like top secret for me because. Back then, it was like yeah. boys didn't. Yeah. We were out doing, we were running the streets. And, uh -huh. you know, I would go to my grandma's house. She'd watch me. And I'm in the, we called it the back room. And me and my cousin would literally be back. I'd be either braiding her hair, messing <laughs> with the hair on some of her dolls. <laughs> and it just never went anywhere. Wow. By the time I was 10 years old, I, I, I was transforming that onto the dogs that we had. Live dogs. Pekingese, long haired dogs. I Are was, you serious? I was taking bottles of color and coloring the dogs. Wow. It, so the, the, fa the infatuation with hair just never left. And uh, 18, right after uh, about three weeks of um, JC, I was just like, that's not for me. And mm. the, the next week I was in beauty college. So literally fresh out of high school, I went right into beauty college and never looked back. Oh my goodness. And it just one snowball after the other from that point wow yeah. so what was your um when you got there was it like so for instance I always tell when I tell people I say it's a testimony of how we ended up in this house in Vegas and I yeah. always say part of part of me knowing that this is where God wanted us to be is mm -hmm. when I stepped it was just a, a foundation and a framing but when I stepped into the front entrance right up here it was a piece that came energy. over me. It's an energy. Yes. I'm big on energy. Yes, it was a piece that came over me yes. that I knew that, okay, this is our this next is home. So did you have one of those types of feelings when it came to hair, when, when you were in beauty school, where you're just like, this is home. I can't imagine myself doing anything else. Yeah, I literally, there were some areas in the beauty college schooling days that was kind of challenging for me because all <laughs> I, I wanted that's for all, yeah, <laughs> all I wanted to do was hair. And when I enrolled and I learned that we had to learn the muscles and the, you know, the structures yep. of the bones. And I was just like, oh, my. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to do this. <laughs> oh. This ain't what so, I signed up for. But my passion for hair made me learn that, too. I was like, if I got to learn the, the structure, learn I'm going to have to learn it, too, because I wanted to do that just that intently. Wow. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Still, I might not be the best with figuring out. I, I do know some, you know, some structures of the bones. But oh yeah, I don't remember hair any was of it. always. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I, I know the occipital, the nape. Well, I remember the, the occipital <laughs> bone and all of that stuff. But ooh. my and it got all into the hands and the, yes, the, the, and then yeah, the sweat the, glands and sebaceous Lord. glands. And the, oh, I remember so all of that. That was my challenge with hair. Other than that, I knew that everything else that was, was it. for me. Now, where did yeah. you grow up? I didn't ask you. I'm actually from Compton, California. Hey. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I didn't completely spend most of my life there. Uh -huh. I've been in the Valley a little bit um, and been in Los Angeles some, but mm -hmm. roughly Compton was where I, it all started. Um, when I was in, at my grandma's house, that was Los Angeles, though. When we, okay. Those days when I was back in the back room doing the, the plats and all that, that was <laughs> Los Angeles, California. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you went to um, beauty school when you were fresh out of high school. Yes. Where was your first place? Where did you work at first? Oh, um, wow. The first place I worked at, um, I tried a couple of salons when I first got out, and none of them really felt good. And I was the type of stylist like... That's big. I would come in one day and like you just explained with your house, mm -hmm. if I didn't feel that energy, the next day I literally was coming back in, taking everything out that I, I had brought in. You. Like, I, And I remember that that was one of the salons that that was an experience at one of the first salons. The second salon, I think I might have stayed a couple of months and then I went into a mall. That was my third salon out of beauty college. Mm -hmm. And I ended up staying in that mall Almost about 15 years. Really? Carson Mall. Wow. I was the press king. I mean, literally, I was silk that was pressing. It. That's what you, you were silk Before pressing. the wigs, before the, the sew-ins, I pressed hair, did haircuts, and for about 10 to 15 years. So and I loved that. I didn't even know the wigs was coming. You couldn't have told <laughs> <laughs> couldn't even told me at that time that the wigs was down the road. So so how did that happen? How did the wigs happen? Um, I from the press, I actually started. Um, it was some couple of stylists that were in the salon that were weaving at the time, and that that drew my attention. Yeah, I'm like, whoa, okay, that's a bigger ticket. It's it looks amazing well, yeah. when it's done. Like, oh, you can really create the creative edge. Mm -hmm. Drew me into sew ins. I'm mm -hmm. like, you can really kind of you know, take a woman and do some transformational things oh, yeah. with a sew-in. So I went into, went from the press to the sew-ins and literally I'm still in the mall at that time. And the sew-ins was really where I kind of evolved into the wigs. The next yeah, phase. Yeah, because it's the natural progression. Yeah. So, and that was, I, I, I sewed in for maybe, you know, seven, eight good years. Wow. Before one day, and I was like doing the full weaves. I was working with the closures and Everything. all that stuff. Like, and I wasn't ventilating at the time. And one day a client brought in a closure and it, you know, that infamous ball spot that's missing. <laughs> yeah. She had that, yes. she had that on her closure. And, and I'm like, I gotta find somebody to fix this. We, this is a good closure. Let's, mm -hmm. let's find somebody to fix it rather than throw it away. And I went into a place that I was buying my hair from at the time, pure virgin hair company. And I went in there and I showed the closure to the lady and she's like, I would charge you more than it's worth to fix it. Really? And I'm backing out the salon. I'm like, okay, that's all right. I'm backing out the salon. Before I could get out the door, she says, but if you go to his and hers and get A, B, and C and come back, I'll show you how to fix it yourself. And it's like, I never thought about wig making a day in my life before that. And something just like a, a light went on. Ooh, to be able to fix that how cool would that be yeah i went to his and hers got a b and c came back about three days later with all everything she told me to get and she was literally swamped with business at that that day i came back i chose like the wrong <laughs> the worst time day to come back <laughs> like she looked at me when i walked through the door like not today <laughs> but she really quickly took the stuff out of my hand took a strand of hair did it really quickly and I'm like, oh, wow. You know, we can't get ventilation that fast. Not that fast. Uh -huh. <laughs> she did it again. I'm like, wow. I think about the third time she was like, here it is. And I played like I got it. I was like, okay, I think I can do it. And I backed out of the salon <laughs> and I went. She had she planted the seed. <laughs> she planted. She planted the seed. the seed. So she probably thinks to this day when she sees like me, <laughs> like I taught him that. But she planted the seed. Wow. It was literally about six months of just searching. I was 
I needed to figure out how that was done. It was six months of that. And I was looking at videos. I ran into Marquetta Breslin. <laughs> I'm just like, I need to figure out how that is done. And I was at a trade show one day and I don't even know the gentleman's name. He was sitting at one of the booths, the hair show, and he had a piece of yarn and a big piece of mesh. A piece of yarn, you. and he was just simulating the tie-in yep. effects. And I had already had about two stages by that point. So seeing him go through the stages as slowly it as clicked. he did, I hurried up and ran home and grabbed a piece of hair, grabbed that needle, and I think I tied my first knot that night. And, and that you're talking about inspira- inspiring at that time, inspirational. Wow. I never stopped tying. People were looking at me like, what in the heck? Are you doing? Because this this like, was around what time frame was this? Um, twenty Probably. about twenty ten. About tw- yep, twenty ten. That was the year after I launched the first laceway training mm-hmm. system. About twenty ten. So this was a long time ago where there was no nothing, nothing. Nobody didn't even know what wigs were. I mean, lace wigs were no, or they had that. Remember the hairline? That oh yeah, just like that. I think that even came after. <laughs> Yes, it I did. Think, You're I right. think that was maybe about two years that was later. Even after where it was just a circle just that, that, hairline. That, that, that was that, it. Oh my goodness. It was like Planet no, of the Apes. Yes, thing. there was no definition or anything to the hairline. <laughs> I remember that. Yes. And literally, I would have I would be in the salon practicing that little knot time. I, my first project took me about five months to finish. Really? Yeah. I was it for someone? No, I and I, I'm going to explain. I couldn't even find a person to do a, a mold on. <laughs> Everybody was just like, oh, not me, know. not today. not. So what I ended up doing was making a mold of my own head, mm-hmm. put it on the block, and I literally worked on, and it wasn't even a full, you would have thought it was a full lace wig. It was just <laughs> the crown and the hairline. And it literally took me about five months to finish that. Wow. But I never was like, tired at that point at any point i was just like this is gonna look amazing when i finish it and i bet and it did I, I have some pictures of it and I, I'm, I'm critical like, i don't know it makes a difference <laughs> i see those pictures <laughs> of that first wig sometime and i'm like you had a long way to go buddy <laughs> you had i mean the direction i didn't know direction i oh, didn't know no, I've seen i was just tying knots and i just, was just yeah and it wasn't bad it, it got me noticed you know mm-hmm. i actually took that very first wig to kim kimball salon and the next thing I knew, I was on a six-month event with her as her assistant. Wow. Pushed me ahead of all of the stylists. In the, I mean, they literally was ready. I mean, I was like, how did I get ahead of all of you guys? And I believe it was that wig. Wow. I believe it. I couldn't explain nothing else. I literally went in there with my portfolio and a wig in my hand. And she took one look at it. And she was going through the salon like, look, this is, he made this. And something was happening in those moments. Literally. I can't even explain it. it wow. It was just snowballing. That is amazing. Snowball. And that, I'll tell you, I look at that first wig and I'm like, wow. Do you still have it? I have pictures of it. <laughs> like, I, <don't laughs> I, think, I think over time, because, you know, we can cut a wig up. I, I made know. a closure out of that for a client. I, oh, okay. I okay. literally dissected it and recreated <laughs> it for somebody else i believe like after so but it was my showpiece forever i bet I would take that yeah i literally had her for wow. a minute and just kept making them and then my daughter's mom was she became my muse ah. the second wig that i made was for her the first wig i couldn't even convince her to, to <laughs> sit still and get a head mold she's like what after are, that, first, that one. first one she sat there we got a mold of her and literally, she would go out and wear the wigs. And when she come back home, then my phone would be ringing. Like, literally, this lady at the, at the mall came up to me and gave me, I gave, ended up giving her your nump. Like, it was snowballing. And she was just, she was my muse. I wasn't making them for nobody. I wasn't selling them. I would just literally put one on her head. And sometimes I would be with her in the store, and I would just see how the women would. And they didn't even know I'm the one that cre- I could just see their eyes, like, they didn't, it didn't look like a wig, but it's like this exotic, who is yeah, this like, exotic is this Peruvian lady with this Peruvian <laughs> hair growing out of her scalp type of a not- notice. So, and I was just like, I got something. I think I got to figure out how to keep this going. So how did you figure that? What did you, what, what came next? Because quite it's, naturally now you're like, okay, people Just letting want God this. lead me. Thank you. Just letting God Thank lead you. me. Because sometimes mm. ha- I have tried to pick up the. The take the steering wheel into my hand. And, we can't. And, and it, it never works. So I just, God, you did this. 
You, you started it. this work in me, and I believe that you are, you know. Yeah, I'm going to order your steps it, and tell amazing. you where to step next. Yes, I, I believe that he's going to guide me in the next one. Wow. So it's just been that. It's ever just been since that. then. It's been that ever since. That is amazing. So, so where, where would you say um, was the biggest turning point for you in the wig portion of the industry? Um, I shortly after I started like making a lot for my, again, my, my daughter's mom was my muse and I started taking pictures of them at that point. When I would see those reactions, I started to pick up the camera. We got, <laughs> we got to get this documented. And I got me an Instagram account and I started just posting. I mean, I wasn't, a, my page was a mess. It's still kind of a mess. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I, mean, but I, I like, I like that though. Yes. I like that it's not structured and pretty yes. and Life I, you, you inspired me saying that. I'm Thank go, I'm going to look at my page differently <laughs> from you saying that just now. Because sometimes I'm like, I got it, man. You got to do better than this. But I started posting those pictures, and again, they weren't the best, but it was just showing people of the art. Mm -hmm. And people started following me, and then I started like reaching out to people. I'd mm -hmm. get in their DMs, and it would be people like I've been looking at on television, you know, actresses and. People that I was fans of, I would get in their DM and, hey, I'm such and such. I'm a wig maker. I do this. I would love to work with you. And, of course, you know, when you get a mess, sometimes people will click on your yeah. page. And, yep, and I exactly. think when they would click on my page, I look up in the morning and it's an inbox from, I'm not going to say any names. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm wiping my eyes like, no, I was at your concert in the back screaming <laughs> Two, 10 years ago. How? And I just, it was all the wigs. Only thing I can attribute that to, it was like I picked up that ventilating needle and something happened. So so to fill in that gap of that time, mm -hmm. how did you learn everything else that would that came with it with measuring yes. and all of that? Because um, with me, I know with me, I didn't have I don't know if you how much of my story, you know, but I had nothing. Nothing. We, but, that's why we're so similar. Yeah. That's why we just connect like that, because it I didn't I completely am self taught there was nothing there then yeah. there was there was nothing so i think i i believe i look at it like i think i went ahead of myself with learning wigs with the ventilation and yeah. then i went back and learned the foundation learning how to create the caps i learned the same, yeah. the like same i say way. i was just ventilating hair into the lace Anything. and didn't know direction direction was like literally um direction was about five years away yeah and that was the the mastery the to mastering, me. Yeah, Once I, when I learned um, how to actually make the hair go different directions, I was like, "What was you doing the first five <laughs> years?" I said that to myself, like, and you had all these people like <laughs> noticing your work. I, so when I started to learn how to chase that grid and make directions and stuff change, that's when I was like, "Oh God, I'm glad you didn't throw me out there when I wanted you to." Because I wasn't ready. Sometimes and, we, and, we and will do that. And if that rush had a jumped on me at the wrong time, I probably never would have learned the rest of it. Right. So I'm glad he just, I mean, I wanted him to throw me out there. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, hold on. Quiet seasons. You know, it was down in the valley seasons. Yep. It was all kind of stuff. And it was so much stuff that I needed to learn. Mm -hmm. And it's still stuff. Oh yeah, it's, it's just that it gives stuff. me uh, uh, ideas and visions all the time. Yes, that I have to sit down and apply. Oh, and I sometimes just, I have to just go rest my brain. Yes, I mean because I I'm like literally I see this wig going. Oh, I could create that and this one before I can finish thinking about that one and something else to come on TV and I'm like, oh, I should try. That would be nice. And it's just it never and it's stops. Just, it's never stops. It it's never constantly. And I don't ever want to get to a moment where it stops. And you have to be around people that embrace that as well yes because I, I was around a lot of people i think i got on their nerves <laughs> i did because this this world when it took off it I, it had my full attention mm -hmm. it lit i was like what is this i first of all i didn't even i had never experienced anything like that so when it took off it had me and if you weren't on board with me mentally i'm sure i was the person that was like <laughs> Yeah, I, I look up and I would be in the yeah. If I wanted to get rid of somebody, pull out that block and start ventilating, <laughs> and the know, whole room so would crazy. clear out. Yeah, I'm, the whole room would clear out. So wow. it was bittersweet, lonely. Yeah, they always say at the top is lonely. I know. So 
it, but it, it's okay. I love it. I do too. I love it. It, it, it actually <laughs> is such an amazing skill. It, it is. It'll bring the people back. It'll, it will. Yeah. And Sometimes God has to filter people. Yes. And I, I tell people that all the time that um, this skill is something, for one, that was not, it was actually about to be, I'm saying extinct for lack yes. of better terms. But Amen. It was out. It was on its way Amen. out. Amen. And I don't know, there was some sort of shift or something that happened, but um, I thank God for that because Amen. now it's something that not only, yes, it's amazing to be able to make wigs for people, but the businesses that these women can have and men mm -hmm. that can have when they Within. don't have to, you know, just from learning this skill, this was a trade years ago that was passed down yes. generations. Yes. And I just, I want people to see it as what it is, because to me, it is that it is an art, it's a skill, it's just as skilled as making shoes, like a shoemaker. To me, it's, it's so similar. Yes, indeed. It just so happens to be with hair. So true. I was reading um, an article that was actually documenting what happened. It said it started, it, wig makers were very prominent. They, this article stated in the 60s. Mm -hmm. You know, actual ventilators that do what you and I do. And mass production came in and pretty much started to repl try to replicate yeah. what the authentic wig makers were doing. But it took off. Yeah. Mass production took off because, it, of course, it was a, a bigger. And yeah. And it was a, a better, faster way to get. And it just took the forefront. And now to see that the wig makers are coming back. That's, that we are back coming back to claim yes. our territory. That yes. part. That, that part. Because it, it, it belonged to the mass production for years. Yes. And so. now I feel like there is so much. Lord, don't don't attack me, y'all. They're going to attack me because I talk <laughs> about plucking a lot. But yes, um, to me, it it takes a piece that could be here and brings it all the way down to here yes. when it can if the craftsmanship is right in the beginning yes you don't have to worry about doing all of that and the mindset depreciating it yes like, and the mindset of a lot of um these stylists and people who don't want to do what we do is it takes too long yeah always but hear that always i've heard that for 10 15 years yes always how do you do that to the point where it's like are you trying to kill my spirit <laughs> of doing this like i understand you but i love this yes so i hear that a lot yeah i do too but my thought process is this by the time a client buys a piece mm -hmm. gets them to pluck it or customize it they've spent bleaching it and everything all of else. that yep yeah they've spent the same amount that they could have spent with one wig doing it right the first time amen and then another thing i i want to add to that amen totally yes they have a, a piece at that point that's not even as durable as something custom made yes you got about three installs with that baby that's it because for one the direction Going back to the direction, a lot of this stuff that's mass produced, the direction of it, you're forcing it to go the opposite direction. And what forcing does? Cause shedding. Yes. You call it, as soon as you start to force that unit to go away that that hair was not tied in, you're probably going to make that area shed out fat. So that's why you see all the ball spots. Exactly. But when you take a unit and you make it the way that person wants it, that unit, if they it's don't take last forever. if they don't take a flat iron or you oh, know true. some curling irons and you know just Burn beat it to out. death, that I've had clients that have units almost as long as I've been ventilating. See the same unit, the sa the one that I made for my mom in the video, I still have. Yes, it's in immaculate condition. Beautiful. They will last you forever. So it, I mean, I love the the black woman, and I hate to see how much money is being dumped in. They don't even realize it. How much money of their money is just being dumped? You buying another wig, you buying another one and another one. When you could have something that would just an investment that That's what an it investment is. That's the key. that would just keep paying yeah. you over and over and, and over. Sometimes again. they have to see it. I'm a, I'm a big believer in. Yeah, that's true. You don't know until you see. Yeah. Yeah. Most of all my clients, I put custom wigs on. You couldn't pay them to go put you know, mass produce on. If, <laughs> if you went and put a mass produce wig on them, they would instantly know the difference. Yeah, immediately. So if you don't know, then you... Then you don't know. Yeah, because we came true. from a generation where before the wigs, everybody wore bangs. If you if you had a full braid up and you had a sew in, you had some kind of bangs. <laughs> so we came from that generation. My daughter bust up laughing when I tell her that. 
My daughter, it's so true, my, my daughter thinks that's the funniest thing. But I said that was the era we came from before we had a part. That's right. And we had a full braid up. All uh-huh. the hair was braided up, but uh-huh. now we got a part, and you can see some of our face. And so we <laughs> we've evolved. We, we actually accepted like a lower class of what that we could be. That's Just true. because we went from that bang to mass production. Mm-hmm. But if women knew if you had to went from that bang to custom creation, you would never even think about mass production. You would never anything. even think about the middle. Mm-mm. So, Mm-mm. And the crazy thing is uh, the terminologies now that have been adapted. Mm-hmm. And um, that, well, first of all, some of this, some of it is wrong, but the craze that we've been hearing about this HD lace. <laughs> ch- <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, my goodness, don't even make me think about how, how I'm working on a, a piece for a client right now. And she specifically wanted she's been hearing about she, HD she, lace. I want I want it. And, I, you know, I added a little bit on to the ticket and you have to. I'm almost mad at myself that I even got into it because I know how to take Swiss lace and color it, ventilate it correctly, tone it correctly, and Swiss lace will disappear. I saw your your piece on that too. Yeah. And I liked it. I don't know if you saw me come yes. in on that. You were talking about yes. the difference between high definition and Swiss. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why are you trying to get something that's like pantyhole material? As soon as you cut that front, it's gonna it's gone. fray and rip and tear. But that's I think that's a big part of the the mass production side yeah. is they're calling it one thing yes. when it's really what they should have been using again. all along. Amen. Well, it, the lace that China has been using is so I mean, you look at these mass produced wigs, like <laughs> I, I just in, did an install yesterday, and the lace is so thick. It's so coated, you can't change the color, and women are wanting to change from that. Had they started with regular Swiss, there wouldn't be this big calling for high definition. Mm-hmm. I think the women are really tired of the mass the production mass lace. Produce, that hard that stuff. That hard stuff. Yeah. And they thinking that if we go to this very, very fine lace, which is only used for film and television. That's it. And maybe and not a yeah. whole lot. And not, not a whole lot. Taking it off and on and all of that stuff. Sp- with spirit gums. Exactly. Something that's very not mild, with, not with, with all this adhesive. ultra whole stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's, it's, not meant for it's that. so much education. And when I saw wigs come onto the scene, I kind of thought that a lot of the black women would start to restore their hair. I'm thinking a wig is the perfect thing to just braid your hair up, put it on, and re- let it restore. And but some of the install methods, my goodness. <laughs> It's just making that just totally <laughs> oblivious. My thoughts of what it could be just totally Go cast out the aside. Window. And it's Some, all, I think it all has to do with education and, and just seeing what um, the seeing how it is now versus um, understanding what it was before yes. and why it is the way it is now. Amen. It's just the one side to it. It's not all this other stuff, but. The, the misconception is I don't need to know that because this is working. Right. But is your client's hair falling out in the process? I'm learning. So I, I'm seeing client. I had a, I, I hate to reference, but a client came to me with had just had that very popular in, Instagram install with the stocking cap yep. and the, you know, the got to be. And then the mm-hmm. I won't say the brand, the, 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 mm-hmm. all that stuff layered on. And I don't know if she took it off herself or it lifted, but literally the skin oh around all around what? her perimeter. And I'm just like, and all, that's all you see on Instagram. That's it. And and literally like with the last, I started out using adhesives because I thought that's what it was. But the last seven or eight years, a lot of my installs are even adhesive free. I have yeah, I don't so much it. stuff that I do now. I very seldom grab a bottle of adhesive unless I'm doing a shoot and you know, you got the fan blowing. Yeah, I have and a little security. yeah you got to have a little security, but so much of the installs is like for me, adhesive free because that's taken away from it being total health care. I mean, hair care. Yeah, that's so, true. And a lot of they, they, a lot of these stylists don't understand yeah. that, and they go to these um, they go to these seminars or these places, and mm-hmm. they learn an install method. But it's so important that you understand hair care as foundation. a foundation, the foundation. And yes, that's so that's so pointing that you say that because so many gener the newer generation are coming in on the wig generation, and they're losing all of the knowledge of. The generation we came in on, yep. we were dealing with the natural hair. Mm-hmm. We were learning how to keep that client's natural hair, 
you know, mm-hmm. healthy and preserved. Now it's all about the wigs. <laughs> and no thought of that client maybe someday wanting to wear their own hair. Nope. Making that client dependent on that service mm-hmm. rather than it being a choice. Yeah. So that's true. I, I worry about our 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 newer generations. I hope that they're getting that foundation about, you know, how to keep how to just make this something that's a trend. And then at the end of the day, if the client wants to wear their own hair, the edges are still hair. Yeah, the edges are still intact. Mm-hmm. The density is still there. It's yeah. Yeah. That's a I feel like that's a huge missing piece of the pie mm-hmm. <clears throat> when it comes to that. And understanding Here's my other one. Mm-hmm. Understanding the true structure of a wig. If you've deconstructed it, understanding why it's constructed the way it is yes. and the different modali- modalities and methods of construction so that you can choose the wig or to choose to make the piece that best suits your client for their needs. Yes. Because so a, a lot of um, stylists are just getting these pieces and they don't understand, well, wait a minute, this particular type of cap might not work for Amen. this particular person. Amen. So it's a lot of that missing that missing part of the education side of it that is a really big yeah. deal. Yes, indeed. That is so true because I, a lot of the caps, I mean, well, a lot of the clients I pretty much make create for it, they always want to wear like it's a, a sew-in. Mm-hmm. So that changes my whole perception of how I exactly. go into creating. Of course, you don't want to use a whole lace cap for something, mm-hmm. you know, that somebody's going to be stitching through. So mm-hmm. you got to know, as you say, what personifies each client. Yes, exactly. That's really important. Yeah. These educational moments, I say, are critical. Yeah. Um, because a lot of what we see is just like my daughter. She does makeup. Uh-huh. And wow. the first thing she, she, somebody asked her something. She said, oh, I'm not an Instagram makeup artist. <laughs> it's so much misinformation. <laughs> yes. All it's you see so- is the end result. You don't see what or or the filter or, didn't I was getting ready to say that filter <laughs> yes. you take that filter off and run into that lady on the street you're going to see all of that lace yes. you're going to see the outline of it yeah everything so it we're we're a lot of the minds is being psyched yeah i agree know, I whereas agree. custom almost i always say you can if you get a little close you're going to see something yeah but custom gives you an illusion that literally People, I, I the biggest compliment that I think I can remember of a client, I mean, of a lady of on my wig, she said to my model, if I, I could have been standing on her head and I wouldn't have known she had a wig on. I think that's the, that's biggest, the biggest, that blew me away more than ever. anything has ever. Like, so custom, you can almost be standing on a person's head. And if it is installed know. right, they will never know. You tell a person you got a wig on, that's what's going to draw them to you because <laughs> yes. they gave you credit for that being your hair. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's it. Yeah. Wow. So before we go, I always, well, I ask most of my guests this question, mm-hmm. and I think you're going to be okay with this question. Um, how did you meet the Lord? Oh, wow. Um, actually, I grew up in church. My grandma was... I, my granddad was the deacon of the church. My my grandma was on the mother's board. And, oh, so it you know, was in you. I lost my mom at 10, and they just literally was like my parents after that. So they kept us in church, Sunday school. Um, and really, you got to find him for yourself. Mm-hmm. So I think like really when I realized for myself that God was real, I was about 14, and I was living in the valley, and I was away from my grandparents, and you know, struggling with my mom being missing, you know, from my life. And she was my everything. She passed mm. away from leukemia. Wow. So about 14, wow. I, I, I was in high school. I think I was 10th grade. And one of my um, my comrades in high school, he I think he was in 11th grade. He did a Bible study. And I, I, I'm a writer, too. So I'm, I'm actually writing this chapter in one of my one of my really? uh, yeah, my compilations. It's so poignant to me. Sorry. But um, he held a Bible study. And that first Bible study, it was at lunchtime. He asked everybody in the room to fast. He said, I want you all to fast from today till tomorrow. And the next day we came back in, everybody was groaning like I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And I think I was about the only one that went from that day to the next day, like fasting. And I think that was the changing point where God came in and started showing himself. 
from that fast. Like literally, he saw that I had the faith, I guess. And the obedience. The obedience. And he started to show himself. Literally, like to where you couldn't even think that was a coincidence. Wow. And 14. About 14. 14. And I think a lot of it was, you know, my mom was missing. Yeah. It was a big hole. So it was it was he space. That gap. Yeah, it was space for him to kind of, you know, when we got mom, mom is God sometime to some of us. You Tell know, I, I had her. She, I had her in my life. So mm -hmm. I know mom is God to some of us. So I think, you know, that void was where he was able to really say, wow, let me let me take you. Let That's me amazing. let me show you who I am. Wow. I, uh, I was about 12 when I got baptized. Yes. But then um, it wasn't until I was older mm -hmm. that I really, really said, okay, God is real. Because yes. then there were times as uh, growing up, both of my parents were on drugs. Uh, crack my cocaine was my their dad. drug of choice. And it was me and I have two younger brothers. Mm -hmm. So at eight years old, I was mom and dad and wow. sis and all wow. of that. But they were wow. functioning addicts, but they would go through these instances where um, things would be like really, they'll go on a binge. That's what, yeah. that's what I would call it. So there's a couple instances, and I've actually never shared this publicly until right now. Wow. But I feel led to. But there were a couple instances where it could have only been by the grace of God that we only. even made it out. So with my mom, um, she I used to have to sleep on my car keys so that I could make sure I would have a way to go wow. to school the next day. So this particular time, um, she was on a binge, and she got my keys from underneath me. And I woke up that, that uh, in the middle of the night, and I think that she was boiling some water on the stove or something. Well, the water had boiled completely out. It's probably the pot had been sitting on the stove empty probably for three or four hours mm -hmm. because our trailer was filled with smoke. And I realize I'm waking up and I'm realizing I'm, I'm coughing. One brother is on the bunk bed above me and the other one is in there on the couch. And we barely made it out in time. God's grace. It was it was God's, God's grace. grace that woke me up and got us out of there on time and then there oh, were goodness. other instances and things like that that happened it's like how you can't doubt him that I, I, I cannot if you want to baffle me i look at the people that see these types of things and everybody god shows himself to everybody in some kind of way yes every and then we go through that and we still don't we still question i can't that I baffles can't, I me can't, i can't question that baffles me like you see his, his presence so much mm -hmm. like the next thing would just be for him to appear. Exactly. He's, he's, where you're like. Yeah, he's so in tune with what you're going on. Yes. With what's going on with you. Yes. So. And that was when I said, hindsight is twenty twenty. So I got angry at my parents after that and stayed angry probably until I left to go to the military, mm -hmm. um, which wow. was years later. And um, but my getting angry with them and leaving forced them mm -hmm. to get it together. Yes. And they finally got their lives together. My brothers were in a good, great Praise space God. and Praise everything God. came together before I, you know, before my mom wow. went home to be with the Lord. And now we still, wow. you know, dad's still here. He's been clean for years. Wow. Amazing relationship with, with his kid, with us. And, so touching. My oh. dad, my dad suffered with, you know, cocaine abuse all of my life. Literally. Oh, wow. I lost him. I lost him a year ago and I lost my grandparents. Oh couple of months ago both of them they oh, went two wow. months apart and my dad's story was uh, he suffered from cocaine abuse he was absentee for many years and the last two years of his life which were 97 uh uh i mean not 97 2017 mm -hmm. um so about 2015 2016 was the last years that i actually got to really meet who he was oh wow he, he had you know Thank did so that. much drugs in yeah. his life that his body was to where he couldn't do it no more. And I think wow. the gift in that was God allowed me to see who he really was. So many people had given up on him. You know, so many people had cast him aside because he had made that his lifestyle. And those last two years to see who he really was, that that's a gift that God couldn't have given to me any better. That was any. I mean, we became like, oh, see, like that the last two years. Wow. So. 
But wow, what a blessing. What a blessing, you know. What a blessing. And it's just amazing how God turns things full yeah, circle. Full circle. With your circle. I mean, with your story. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. amazing how he comes in and rectifies things. Yeah. And, and makes it. And if, makes if we're it open whole. Exactly. To that. Yeah. If we're open to it. And my, my mom ended up, she was clean for years. And if Praise it God. wasn't for her, we wouldn't have been able to build our business at the, at the rate wow. that we built it because she would come up from North Carolina. So she got diagnosed with uh, stage two breast cancer when Mm. I was uh, in 2006. Mm -hmm. We had, by that point, been three years in business because we started in 2003 with Braised by Breslin. Right. right. And then um, she got diagnosed. It was stage two at that point. She had surgery. I tried my best to convince her to just get a double mastectomy. And she didn't do it. She went into remission six years almost to the exact date. The cancer came back as metastatic. It was fluid in her lungs. It was mm. um, a tumor on her uh, ovary the size of wow. a football. And the doctor gave her, um, I think, nine months on this new chemo wow. that she had. And um, I remember saying in the doctor's office, you don't put a time on God. Right. I I said, I think I said that to myself. I didn't say that to him. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said she was going to be in a wheelchair and all of this stuff. She was wheeled in there, but she walked out. She walked out without that wheelchair. She said, you don't, you can't tell me. And she lived for, it was either three or four years after he Mm. said nine months. And then I think she just got tired and she just, you know, she just said, I'm, I'm tired. And we told her mom, go home. We got it. Wow. And so she transitioned nobody over. Nobody like mom. Nobody like mom. Nobody. Mm-mm. Nobody. So she she lived with us. She did her hospice care at our house. And as she was transitioning, her sister was there. Family came. So we were able to be with her when she made the transition wow. over to be with, with God. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's so beautiful. Thank I, you. I was actually there able to be there with both my grandparents oh, this transition. See. They were at home. That's a blessing. Yeah. My, my grandma went this past June. Mm-hmm. My granddad, I mean, the love must have been so strong. They were 70, se- almost 72 years married. Oh, and he wow. passed two months to the date almost of her passing oh, in August. Oh, my goodness. So, and I was at home again with both of them. So it's it's a bittersweet It is bittersweet, thing. yeah. Yeah. And my mom, you know, their their daughter, she passed away on my 10th birthday. I lost my mom literally getting ready to go to Universal Studios. I think we were getting ready to plan for it that morning. And she she had suffered from leukemia, which yeah. is cancer of the blood pretty much. Mm-hmm. And she had battled that for about six years. And for some reason, you know, her date that the, the Lord called her home was my birthday. So I think that was that did something too. that that was that yeah. was powerful. Very you know, powerful. Like literally that was powerful. And I think some of the things, either it kills you or it makes you stronger, incredibly stronger. Mm-hmm. What don't kill you will makes make you, you stronger. incredibly stronger. Cause you, you can never prepare yourself for the death of a close loved one. Mm, no, no, yeah, no. The brother, sister, parents, no, ch- no, children. No. You can't, it doesn't matter. Even though I knew mom was transitioning when mm-hmm. she took that last breath, I still wasn't prepared for wow. it. You wow. can never really never. prepare yourself for that. And being 10, I didn't even know a lot of it. Like right. they kept a lot of that from me. I didn't, I mean, I knew she had leukemia, but I didn't know I what all it was. And- yeah. I didn't know it was a six month date. I mean, a six year, you know, prognosis given to her, really? her condition. I, I didn't know none of that. So like the last seven days of her life is when I like saw her. It, 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 yeah, deteriorate. Yeah. But like, so it was all of a sudden, kind of, if you think of like. That's how it was yeah. with, with us, too. But I thank God for that. Yeah. Because if, the, if I had seen mom in the condition she was in before she was yes. dying for an extended period of time. Yes, indeed. I think it would have bothered me a lot more than it yeah. did. But God allowed me. And I, and I was sitting in the closet praying when we were still in South Carolina. Yeah. And I said, God, but I prayed for you to heal her. Why didn't you heal her? Why didn't you give us more time? 
And he said, Marquetta, I gave you 10 years with your, with your mom. And I sat and I thought, and he's right, every prayer that I prayed, he said, she shouldn't have made it out the first time. Right. But I answered Just have your you prayers. Just look back over. Yes. All of the graces and the mercies and the yes. miracles. Yes. And I began to get immediately thankful for mm-hmm. the time that I did have with her because it was I, I, I didn't have to have that time. That was yes. a gift. So I thank God that he allowed me to see how she was suffering. Yeah. I, 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 I could see it. Because yeah. before, my mom was, she could be talking to you right now and you wouldn't know and that. And moms she, know how to not let you know what's going on with Yes, that, we do. I had to become a parent <laughs> my own self to learn, you know, that we know how to mask mm-hmm. stuff for our children's sake. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and she did, no matter how it. old I got, she still masked it. But yeah. then in that short little three days, I saw her suffer. And I said, OK, God, I understand. Now yeah. I understand what people mean when they say it's OK. They're not suffering yeah. anymore. I said that about both my grandparents. Yes. Seeing their final days. I was like, OK. Yeah. I, I, I'm I'm not going to be okay with it, but I, I know it's a better place for them. Right. And you just don't want to see them suffering. Yep. So I, And that's real. That's yeah. very, And I very think real. pretty much when I came to both of those decisions in my heart, it was a couple of days after that both of them transitioned. Mm. You, know, you try to hold on to them as much as you can, and you realize this, they're, they're suffering. Yep. And once we let them go. Then that's it. For me, it literally was a couple of days Later, and you they transition. They, oh, they turn. Okay, yeah. gotcha. I mean, when I came to that point in my mind that okay, this was gotcha. too much, seeing them suffer like that, God, I'm ready for them. You know, yeah. I'm ready for you to do what you have to do yeah. next. Yeah. And then it just happened. It just yeah. happens. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the, and then I say, too, the biggest thing was because even though I, I tried to prepare myself for it mentally mm-hmm. and I said, how am I going to get, my mom was, uh, aside from my husband and my kids, the closest person to me. How on earth am I going to do this without? You just, yeah. And so you try to prepare yourself for it, although you can't. But at the end of the day, it was the grace of God and the support of my husband and the kids that pulled all the way through. And I came out, I think, better than I was before she passed away. Wow, wow! But it was that was a, a definite. I think journey. their spirits somehow enhance our their, our lives after they leave this earth. Mm. I do because some of the stuff I look at, like literally, like that I that I have like been exposed to some of the great stuff. I'm like, it's not even happening to the average person. Is it because of what I went through? Mm. Is it some kind of spiritual compensation <laughs> like it, it you, it's no coincidence mm-hmm. I, I i look at nothing as a coincidence so i agree i, I don't think, look at anything yeah as a coincidence. we go through stuff but it's compensated sometimes spiritually in a way that it might not make sense to us but we get tenfold back oh absolutely yeah we get tenfold back after you know the suffering and you know the grieving mm-hmm. passes mm-hmm. as long as we uh I was saying this the other day to somebody, as long as we don't stay there too long. Yeah. 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 That's and an I, important I, ooh, key too. My goodness. I I literally grew up grieving. Like literally, I became a man that that for ten ten years old. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I I grieved a lot. Yeah, I, think, I bet. I, I think I grieved until I had my baby, my daughter. She's nineteen now. So wow. when, when I when she came into the world two thousand, it was all about her. It was like that was she was a part of the compensation. Mm. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. It was a lot of grieving before that. A lot yeah. of. And it's like once she came, I'm like, OK, we got to focus in another area. Yeah. And that was one of the best things I could ever do was wow. to become a father. Yeah. That was one of the best things that could have ever happened out of all the tragedies and everything else. Wow. That's so, amazing. Yeah. That is awesome. I'm trying to get her on my team as well. She's in the military now. Is she? What she, she just went into the Navy. Um, Did she? She's been in about a year now. She's in out in San Diego, and I wanted her. I mean, she was a shop baby. Her yeah. mom. Her mom's a hairstylist. I'm a hairstylist, so she literally grew up in the salon. So I'm, you know, the wigs coming along. Yes. I had all my plans. I'm like, oh, she's getting ready to graduate high school, and she comes to me and say, Dad, I'm thinking about the military. 
<laughs> it's and a great decision, though. A beautiful decision. Yes. I, I gasped, though, when she first told me. I'm like, because I had all these visions. <laughs> I had all these visions. I'm like, oh, she could be my, my, my sidekick. Uh-huh. She knows this stuff. Like, she know a wig. She know French lace from Swiss lace. She knows curly texture Everything. from kinky texture. So I just had these visions. And she told me she was going into the military. That knocked the wind out of me. But about a month into it, I saw what she saw. Mm. And it's, 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 it was an amazing decision. It is an incredible decision. Yeah. I would do it over and over and over again. Yeah, she, I was in for uh, oh, you were. nine and a half years. Wow. Mm-hmm. And my what division? Was in, uh, Air Force. Air Force. Mm-hmm. And my wow. husband was in for eight. I didn't know that. Yep. So I, I would do it over and over and over again. It yeah. was when really when I fell back in love with hair. Yeah. So when I was in a part of my story that I didn't share, I was when I was in high school, I had the opportunity to go to cosmetology school. Mm. And I said no, because why I are we so why are we so in tune? I, you telling my story. <laughs> I thought that was, you know, I, well, from six years old. Yeah. So I said, well, I don't know of any hairstylist that doesn't have to work a second job. So I don't want to do that as a, because I had my brothers and I didn't know what wow. how things were going to go with my parents. And so. I was scared of what everybody was going to think. Really? That was my whole. I was in high school, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah I, no, and and it was just ten. I wanted. I it was an ROP Me program. Too. Yes. And a couple of couple of the yep. girls were in the ROP program. The bus school bus would come pick them up and take them to the. And I was just like, I bet that's so cool. I wanted to do it so bad, but I said no. Wow. So yeah, so I ended up going. To the Air Force, mm-hmm. which my family laughed at me. That's a whole nother. <laughs> they laughed because I was too girly. They said, you are not going to the Air Force. S- sounds like my daughter. <laughs> I moved to uh, New Jersey. Yeah. Okay. And from Jersey, I was staying with my, aunt, with my aunt. I worked two jobs, and a guy came up to me. Actually, I was working customer service at Circuit City. Mm-hmm. Guy comes up to the front desk dressed in uniform. And I was like, hey, what's that? What's the military like? And he starts to explain it to me. So I came home and I told my family, I'm going to the military. They wow. they actually laughed. It was wow. so funny. But I ended up going. And when I got to basic training, I don't remember how they found out I could braid hair. But that's wow. how I got all of my duties done is I would trade. I would braid hair wow. and they would go clean the bathroom or the day room or whatever. That is, that is so, I didn't have to do our it. Our stories are so in tune because my daughter's recruiter came to the house one day once she recruited <laughs> And he found out mom and dad were both hairstylists. What? And how much she had been running from the salon at this point. And he was telling her basically what you're telling me. Like, do you know what your life could be like on base if you take up some of this stuff that your dad is trying to show you? And she's looking at me like, okay, dad. Did I, you tell I, yeah, him to say I, this? Yeah, like she, she's thinking I had done paid him or something. So, but so in line with what you're mm-hmm. saying, like, so. Yeah. Yeah. And so those clients from clients from Mm -hmm. basic followed me to my first duty station at Langley. And at that time, um, braiding hair in the state of Virginia wasn't regulated. So I was Mm -hmm. still making money in the dorms while I was still active duty because you don't get paid a lot of money as a a, uh, E1. So met my husband a couple years later and he found out that you could get your braiding license based on your experience. You just wow. had to have an affidavit signed. And so I still wasn't a cosmetologist. There's, there's a few states that pretty still much do yeah, it that way, I right? Think, I don't know if Nevada's like that. Oh, is uh, it? I don't want to say, but I think so. Oh, I, wow. I, don't wanna, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, I know it's a braider's license that yeah. Coming from Los Angeles, we, we don't know. And either you have a cosmetology license yeah, or, or you don't. Or you don't. So, but I've been learning a little bit about Las Vegas. There is a such thing as a braider's license. I didn't know that which here. Which pretty much kind of puts people in the perspective of sew ins and things like that. Right. With just, just this no small chemicals. Cert- yeah. Right. That's amazing. Yeah, it yeah. is. So I ended up, though, getting my full cosmetology license when we moved to Charleston. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a journey. It was that a you wouldn't journey. trade for anything in the world. Nothing in the world. It's, that's when you know it's your passion. When yes. it's just like, we've done it for free. We've done it. Exactly. Yeah, we've done it when it was no purpose. We just found ourselves working that gift. So I said that so, to say, I think your daughter is coming back. 
I believe, I believe so. I believe. I, I, I think I gotta kind of really stir up some stuff because mm-hmm. it's in her, like literally, mm-hmm. like it's in her, and I believe so. Because she so. would, she would be amazing. I hope this, so. This team would be amazing. The stuff that I've and her, her and her mom and I both have put in her just growing up in the salon. Oh my gosh! Yeah, this is probably part of her journey. It's probably yeah. the way God set her up. My goodness. Yeah. I'm, There's you, things you're listening that, to that now. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. things that I got from the military that I would not have gotten in regular life. A lot of uh-huh. the disciplinary stuff and the way we run our business, yes. too, with yes. systems and processes. And I would not have understood the importance of continuity and mm-hmm. all of that had I not been in the military. And not only that, but in the managerial part. So I... And one, my, probably my, I'll say my most important job was that I had to run the mail facility for the entire Charleston Air Force Base. So not only did I have to deal with the incoming, like literally the incoming mail, but I also had to learn how to manage people and how to manage these different types of people and different attitudes and how to so it taught me and that puts you in the business perspective yes because sometimes and that's one of the things i always talk about it's an artist side and there's a business side yep and we got to know how to balance both of those exactly yeah because sometimes if just being the best artist with no business nothing if people don't know you exist amen (laughs) so that part is very important yes yes yeah so that is so cool, though. Thank I'm, you. I'm definitely going to let share with her. Yes. Because I see the difference in her this past year that she's been in a year. Just the organization, the uh-huh. the cleanliness, the uh-huh. you know the and and that yeah, she's my daughter. She kind of came from. <laughs> she kind of came. I'm, I'm I'm not nasty, but a little junky sometimes. You know, I'll and that's, th- I'm, yeah. That's creative so we just that's, are. Yeah, you you look at my workstation and sometimes you. But like, you know where everything is at, right? And, but that hair is laid. Hey. When they walk out that shop, the, the the station might be a little unorganized, but the hair is the focus for me. The hair it's is everything I'm focused on. <laughs> so before we go, you have some pieces that you brought with you. I sure. Do. I want to see. Okay. Um. Actually. And this is the stuff that I create. This is a, a, a frontal piece that I, I'm creating. Um, yes. But a lot, and it's still in the, the fam- I'm actually at the stage where I like to add the softer hairs in this. These little pockets yes. that are open. So I'm yes. leaving that open. This is actually a piece for my daughter. Is it? She was supposed to have came and seen me um, Christmas and her schedule changed and we didn't end up meeting. Aww. I was totally broken, but this is something that I'm actually going to do with her. I love um, this. Take this frontal piece and create... Um, a full unit with it. You know, I'm an assembly piece together guy. Uh, uh, me too. Yeah. I I create full lace wigs, but most of my work is front lace. Like I, I'm yes, the hairline and guy. Closures and yeah. hairlines. I love I think, a hairline. Yes. I love a closure. Yes. yes. And I don't, we don't necessarily have to sit there all, no. all month. No. No. <laughs> so or all week I'm, and make a piece that's pretty. Thank what you kind so, of hair? Um, uh, and that's another thing I'm huge on. Virgin hair. Me too. Um, that actually was Indian hair. And sometimes I'll texture it a little bit to kind of get some of the textures that you can't find with mm-hmm. virgin, virgin hair. So mm-hmm. this was actually textured a little bit to get it a little tighter. than. This is pretty. Yeah, it's so. very, very soft. God bless. Yeah. So I just want to show some of the hair. I actually like. Love oh, this. yes. This is some of my vir- virgin hair. Oh, my gosh. I, I wish y'all am, could feel this. I am a stickler about virgin hair like literally like as much tediousness and meticulousness that goes into it's wig so making soft. i always say that only the best should be used I to make agree. it if you're going to sit there and put that much time only into use a wig, the best only the best oh this is so, so soft and literally this type of hair was just cut from a donor single donor right single I donor the only thing they probably do to that hair, of course they do to that hair, is sanitize it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's no processing whatsoever. Oh and my gosh! That's that's. Something. And do you source your hair yourself? Yeah, I actually um I I low key I'm not really a vendor vendor, but I do I can pretty much provide any texture a client want, but I'm just more so the wig maker. I know. So I feel that you. keeps me going, but I keep me enough to kind of keep that that area going. Mm-hmm. But this is just some of the blondes. Oh, yeah. That we work with. Like, you know, it's hard It's hard to maintain the integrity of the hair with blonde. Yes. But this if is you, so soft. My goodness. It, 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 oh. There is a new um, technology going on with the way they are light. Now, that, that hair started. 
Yes. This color. Look at that. The technology that they're that they are uh, implementing on coloring hair now pretty much slows the process down to about a three day process to go from this ah, to that, which but pretty, still, which pretty much. Le- I mean, you see that curl pattern. Once somebody puts thirty to forty volume in it's, bleach, it, you lose no all this. Curl pattern, you yeah. lose that. So with the way that you know, I've kind of currently learned how to color hair. We're preserving hair to like. This if I had my eyes closed and I was touching both of you these, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't know which one was colored and which one was virgin. That is amazing. So I just love virgin hair. I'll yeah. make a unit. I'll make a piece with whatever a client gives me if that's their preference. Mm-hmm. But most of my clients want me to pretty much do find your the, thing. Find, yeah, give me what I see in this picture. So I get yeah. the hair and everything. I love it. Yeah. So my next piece. I don't have yes. a lot for it, but she is a finished piece. She's just a little bit. Yeah, she's, okay, so. I wish I had a block for her. Oh, my gosh. I have, um, um, I don't have a block in here. She is actually finished. She's full. Um, she just, yeah. And I do those, like, single parting. I call that the economical unit. Oh, I'm in love. You know, <laughs> I call. so beautiful. I call that the economical unit because it's pretty much <laughs> just. The party that's and it. the hairline. That's it. That's ventilated. Because that's all you really need. That's all need you really the, need. The oh, here's a block. Yeah, awesome. that's that's all you Thank really you. need. And who's willing to pay for 60 hours worth of full lace time? You know, I, I, show me that type of a crowd and I'll gladly, I'll <laughs> gladly I sit gladly. there. I'll <laughs> gladly sit there and, and ventilate you a full lace. But a lot of times it's on an economical um, oh project my. approach. This is everything oh, god bless you this so that's so one of my show goodness. pieces um yeah she's one of my show pieces now i like baby hair is a little different from everybody else right uh, uh, <laughs> i see all of the you know the fancy <laughs> stuff that goes on with the baby hairs on instagram and i kind of got my own little preference that i have that i like mm-hmm. and it's more of a natural look me too. You know, we all got shorter yes. edges around the front, and I just yeah. All I, of it, all of our. Edges I don't like don't too much definition. Down. Yeah, no. De- baby hairs don't go with every style. No, I don't believe, they so. don't. Or people like me, I I have baby hair, but mm-hmm. mine tend to curl up a lot more. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I'm very particular this about the so hair pretty. that I'll use around the edges. Yes, um, that's very yeah, important because it's all about what the eye sees. This is so beautiful. God bless. God bless. So, so beautiful. The best hair that I, I, I can find um, oh is, is really what I always try to look for, like, because that's what set it off. It's light and breathable, too. Yes. I wish I wish they could feel it. It's light and breathable. It This is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very, beautiful, beautiful, very much. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, I want to thank you. you. You're welcome. I'm, I'm still, I'm going to go out of here pinching myself. <laughs> how, how did I end up in the presence of such a phenomenal businesswoman? Thank you. I feel how the same way, sir. did I end up in your presence? Like I was watching you on YouTube not too long ago and I'm like, she's amazing. I never knowing that I'm going to be here in your <laughs> presence doing this. Thank you. Thank amazing you, thank podcast, you, thank you. my sister. I love thank you, you. I'm a so hugger. much. Yes. Oops, I am a hugger. Oh, it's all God good. Me you. too. God, God bless, bless you. you. Thank you so it. much. What a blessing. What thank a blessing. you. Wow. Any parting words before we leave um, for the people? I believe that 2020 is going to be an awesome year. Yes. Wigs is more popular now than they've ever been. They've ever. Been, they've been around forever. <sighs> yes. But the popularity of them now, the open market for Behind the scenes, the construction, it's just some amazing possibilities. Mm-hmm. So I just tell everybody, just watch out. I'm excited. Watch out for 2020. If you enter the wig business, as far as like the creation, come check out Miss Breslin. Because she's amazing. Or. I Hey, I, I love what I do too. I'm an educator <laughs> as well. Jermaine. But I yes. love this lady. Thank she's you She's doing so some much. amazing stuff. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you too. We'll talk to you soon. Hey.